When I worked in a hospital, it was common for me to see people's lives ruined by insulin resistance. Having to go to dialysis three times a week because their kidneys stopped working, limbs being amputated because of poor blood sugar control and recurrent infections, and non-stop finger pricks and daily needles for insulin. You learn pretty quickly that diabetes can be a nightmare to deal with. And while you may not be diabetic, Many people are insulin resistant, which is the first stage leading up to diabetes. In fact, 40% of young adult Americans are estimated to have insulin resistance. So if you put 100 people in a room between the ages of 18 and 44, nearly half of them have insulin resistance. That's a lot. In the short term, this can lead to things like low energy, low libido, weight gain, and poor focus. It can also cost you money in the form of decreased productivity, doctor's visits, and co-pays and medications. Long-term insulin resistance is a huge issue because it predisposes you to nearly every every bad health outcome. Chronic kidney disease, blindness, loss of limbs due to infections, heart attacks, strokes, Alzheimer's, and even cancer. The good news is insulin resistance is absolutely reversible for the majority of people if you know what to do and you take action. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So in order to fix a problem, you first need to define it. So that's what we're going to do with insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is when the cells of your body become resistant to insulin. Duh. And insulin is a hormone that pulls blood sugar in the form of glucose into your cells. Insulin resistance develops slowly over time. And at a certain point, it gets so bad that you begin to have excess glucose or sugar in your blood. And when your average glucose is between 100 and 125, we call that prediabetes. And if your average glucose is above 126, that is what's called diabetes. But make no mistake about it. If your average glucose is above 100, you're already insulin resistant and on your way to developing diabetes if you don't do something about it. So if you want to reverse your insulin resistance, here are six evidence-based ways to do so. Number one, cut back on the carbohydrates that you eat. By definition, insulin resistance is a carbohydrate tolerance disorder. So by cutting back on your carbohydrate intake, you will decrease your blood sugars and slowly increase your insulin sensitivity. Now, I'm not saying you need to go on a ketogenic diet. That is rarely necessary. You just need to determine what the ideal amount of carbohydrates are for you. And the best way to do this is to use a continuous glucose monitor. This is a device that you wear for 10 to 14 days and it monitors your blood sugar 24 7 and allows you to see how your blood sugars are responding to the different foods you are eating and ideally you want to aim for an average glucose of 100 or less for some people that means they may need to limit their carb intake to 100 grams a day for others it might be 150 grams the beauty of a continuous glucose monitor is that it allows you to make more personalized decisions as it's giving you real-time feedback on what's working and what isn't for instance you may find that there is a big difference in the way your body responds to 20 grams of carbs if it came from a soda versus a cookie versus a banana Different people respond differently to different carbohydrates. Number two, increase your physical activity. The research today points to high intensity interval training and resistance training as being best for insulin resistance. That being said, if you are not very active, any type of activity is going to be beneficial for you, even if it's just walking after meals. In fact, a recent study out of the journal Sports Medicine found that walking for just two to five minutes after meals was enough to significantly improve blood sugars. The point is you don't have to work out 10 hours a week to see a benefit. The most important thing is to to get started and be consistent. Number three, get your light right. This is going to surprise a lot of you, but your light exposure is going to affect your blood sugar levels. You see, your body's intimately tied to light exposure, which we used to get from the sun before we had electricity. We would wake up with the sun, which sets our circadian rhythm throughout the day, which our hormones are tied to. And remember, insulin is a hormone. So if you're not getting outside in the sun first thing in the morning, or you're not getting outside in the sun throughout the day, this can be affecting your circadian rhythm. And this is especially a problem if you are getting exposure to blue light light at nighttime before bed. You see, blue spectrum light is stimulatory in nature and it suppresses melatonin release. This is fine during the day because it helps wake you up and again, that is part of setting that circadian or daily rhythm. The problem is at nighttime, we want to tell the body that it's time to go to sleep. When you get exposure to that blue spectrum light at night, suppresses melatonin, and it doesn't allow your body to get ready for bed. Not only this, but research has shown that exposure to blue light at nighttime will impair your insulin sensitivity. Number four, optimize your sleep. Building on getting your light right, making sure you are getting adequate sleep is essential for improving your blood sugars. Poor sleep quality or duration has been shown to impair sensitivity over the course of time. Even worse, poor sleep leads to increased cravings for unhealthy foods, which leads to weight gain and insulin resistance. So what can you do to make sure you are getting great sleep? While I covered this in a 
previous video, here are some quick tips. Make sure you are aiming for a minimum of eight hours of sleep a night. Avoid caffeine after 2 p.m. Avoid alcohol completely or at a minimum, stop drinking three hours before bed. Stop drinking water two hours before bed. Wear blue light blocking glasses after the sun goes down. Make sure when you are ready to go to bed that your room is cold and dark. And before we go on to number five, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. It helps with the algorithm and subscribe for future videos. And with that, let's get on to number five. Number five, weight loss. Now, if you follow the first four items, they alone should help with weight loss. But outside of exercise, lowering your carbohydrate intake and improving your light and sleep quality, losing weight by itself has been shown to improve insulin resistance. While I don't think there's any one size fits all approach to losing weight, one thing that I find extremely useful is to track your food intake using an online app. What gets measured gets managed. And when you track your food intake, it gives you objective feedback on how many calories you are taking in, what your macros look like, and how much junk you are actually eating versus how much you think you are. Knowing this also allows you to track your progress as you begin to implement changes in your diet. Finally, number six, correct mineral deficiencies. The production and activity of insulin requires many minerals. For instance, many people don't know that zinc is the backbone of insulin, yet doctors rarely ever test for zinc levels. Magnesium deficiency is another mineral that is associated with insulin resistance that is almost never tested for. The other big minerals that are associated with insulin resistance include chromium and selenium. By getting a comprehensive nutritional panel and testing for these minerals, you can identify where your imbalances are and correct them. 